Oh, there we go. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> greetings. Um, I come bearing greetings, not of my own card, but by the authority and the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, because really, I usually joke to say I'm Jesus' friend, um, but he is really the core and the center of what we try and do. My name is Nsanshla Mukari, and I'm very passionate about really just connecting um, with other people and collaborating on something meaningful and valuable that will really bring about change and value, not only in our lives, but in the lives of those around us. Uh, that is a big reason, or a big part of the reason why we actually engage like this on a weekly basis, uh, sometimes more often, so it might be two, three times, um, and sometimes it might even be more stretched out, right? It depends on what is possible, what is the leading, and so forth and so on. Currently, we are on the journey of unpacking the book of Genesis chapter 1. Why that? Specifically because it's really where we see God at work. If really there's a time to see God working, um, it's in the book of the beginnings, the very first chapter, Zoganji, he's at work. Um, and already that communicates that that is mine and yours uh, path. We have to walk the path of work. And if we're going to have to do it, if you're going to have to do something, isn't it, or does it not make sense to do it well, to do it excellently? Uh, because actually, as you'll find, as we'll find out today in scripture, we are actually not only equipped, but programmed, designed to work and work in an excellent way that actually, <laughs> that results in powerful results or that brings about powerful results. I've said a lot, um, so maybe let's step into it. Some context. Um, we ended at the verses 27, I think it was, um, last week, if I'm not mistaken, I should be. Um, and now we continue in that journey. We are going to be reading verses 28 specifically. And here we hear whew, a telling message. Maybe let me just go in and read it, right? And then we can unpack it a bit. Um, thanks for joining in, by the way. Um, welcome. Okay, Genesis chapter 1, verses 28. It says, and God blessed them. I've underlined the word blessed there, and we'll touch on it just now. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. There's a lot of instructions, right? Fruitful, multiply, replenish and subdue it. What? The earth, right? And then he continues to say, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air <clears throat> and every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So, first, the command is about fruitfulness. Be fruitful. So, already please think about what that means to you. In definition, when we say someone is fruitful, and I say that um, not wanting to, to for us to think about the obvious, which is you know, tree and plants and nature in terms of fruitfulness. But think of a person. When you say someone is fruitful, what is it that they do? What is it that you see? Because that's the first blessing. This is, in effect, a blessing. Okay? Be fruitful. And the second uh, result or the resulting thing when you actually are fruitful is that you multiply. Be fruitful and multiply, right? The second part of the blessing. And then uh, the third part, he says, replenish the earth. We'll unpack that as well. Think about definitions, please. And by the way, as you think about this, start writing keywords so that we can engage on the comments around this. It's very powerful. Um, and replenish the earth. Ne? And then the last thing he actually mentions, he says, subdue it. So, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. Let's, let's take a few steps back. The very key words that he opens the verse with, he says, and God blessed them. Okay, here's what um, the Lord is saying through this, is that you and me, of course, you walk around carrying, carrying a blessing. And this is, if, if really, if we hear nothing else, uh, from today's scripture, that is the most important part. That is the most important affirmation. You, not the guy next to you or whoever that you are thinking of, can think of. 
you, irrespective of the current situation, you walk around this earth carrying a blessing. And that is powerful because it means you already then have the tools of the trade. I think that's what we call it. Because if you carry a blessing and already we establish that you are designed for a particular um, specific type of work, right? Um, so if you already carry a blessing, that means you have the equipment that is required to do what needs to be done. You are fully, fully, fully equipped. Okay, I mentioned a term, tools of the trade. If you think about work and corporate, you know, um, uh, they, they give you a job and they say your job is going to be, I don't know, laying a brick. What they will give you in terms of for that job requirement, they will probably give you a shovel so that you can mix, you know, uh, the sand and cement and so on and so forth. They'll probably give you that thing that you use to put the cement and uh, I don't know what it's called, the scooping thing. Um, the point I'm making, I guess, long story short, is that they will give you the necessary tools for you to do that job. So when it comes then to the point that God has made to us here is that he already has given us the tools required to do the job that he created us to do. You are equipped. So when the Bible says, and God blessed them, the blessing is actually giving you what you need to do what you have to do or what you were designed to do. You get it, right? You walk around carrying that blessing and that equipment or that equipping. Um, um, uh, again, incorporate a quick example. You know that if they do employee satisfaction surveys, one of the things that they focus on and ask about is whether or not you have everything you need to do your job. Because if you don't, of course, then the survey would come out not so favorable. And the companies that are so-called best companies to work for are those that have fulfilled and made that a basic requirement. It's not even something we speak about. Whereas they, in that they give you what you need to do the job. Whether that is physical tools, depending on the type of job, or actual soft skills or training that you may need. Right? Um, if, even, for instance, if you have a traveling job, they give you or they pay for the traveling costs. They make sure that you're informed what to do uh, for the travel. Most of them have a traveling desk or um, uh, um, cooperate or engage or, I don't know, they, they subscribe to certain services that provide that service to all the employees that do travel. So, in effect, I'm trying to say that it, it, this is, is not a new thing. Incorporated is known. If you're going to do a job, you have to have the tools for the trade. So when it comes then to God, how much more? Right? So uh, it, uh, this must actually be convincing enough that you have been blessed. You have been given what you need to do the job. The one word to uh, understand and actually explain that, you have been fully equipped. That's the word, equipped to do what you need to do. Amen. Okay. And then the, the, the second point, secondary point about the equipment that we've been given, or yeah, um, the blessing which is being equipped, is that your equipment is not for leisure, right? It is not to necessarily, uh, uh, it is not a want, it's not a good to have, but rather, <laughs> or sub. Um, it is not a, 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 a good to have type thing, but it is actually something you need to do and perform the duty and job that you need to perform, right? So it's a need. It's not for leisure, but for work. If you think, for instance, about uh, a typical, let's say they give you a laptop at work, right? It's assumed and it's known that it's not for you to go do leisure stuff, but it is given to you to do work. Um, and everything else then comes after if it does come. So what I'm trying to say is the blessing of the Lord upon your life, it is not for leisure, but it is for your job. Okay, cool. That's the second other point. And then the third point I want to actually uh, bring across, and I wrote here down, it's unfair advantage. Um, and by that, if we can think of an analogy of an axe, right? If you need to cut a tree, we know that the difference is in the sharpness of the blade. I think there's a proverb boy saying actually that says that, the wise man spends more time sharpening his blade and less time actually hacking the tree. Because you know that if it's sharp enough, right, if it's sharp enough, uh, then the job to actually bring that tree down will be quicker. But if you have a blunt axe, it will take you forever uh, to try and bring down that, that tree. So it's unfair, it's, it's that kind of advantage. 
So with the blessing then gives you that unfair advantage over those that actually are not aware that they have it or those that may not have it for, for lack of a better or rather for bringing out this point across. So that X analogy, um, if you think about it, the sharper your X, the more or the quicker you will actually get the tree down. So it saves on time. So efficiency, then it's of course the resulting effect as far as that is concerned. So um, how then, what does this then mean in the context of God and the gift that is given you? My personal opinion is that spend some time um, sharpening the axe, sharpening what you have to do or what you know, or what you need to know about him as your creator. Um, whether that's, for instance, and actually let's say better, the best example and approach, uh, talking from personal experience, once a day, a week has seven days, right? Once a day, uh, one of those seven days, and not even the full day, but two hours out of that day, typically a Sunday, just to go in a space like a church or whatever equivalent of that is in your space and go and hear and study and experience what this gift and blessing is all about in your life. Because unless you do that, then it's going to lie dormant. I hope that makes sense. Because that's the only way then you can grow this relationship that you have with the one that has established and created you. Okay, so let's move on. So the blessing is within you. You walk around carrying it. Like a pregnant woman carrying a seed, you have a blessing that you have. Okay, and then secondly, what is the blessing as pronounced is that you must be fruitful and multiply. Um, and then it says replenish the earth and subdue it. Okay, so when it speaks about fruitfulness, it speaks about um, having or duplicating yourself in my mind. That, that's what comes into play. And how does that happen? It happens with actually then associating with like-minded people who will actually fuel and fan rather your fire, right? Um, and in those people, you pour out your spirit, they pour theirs, and in that, you actually form a community that actually motivates and encourages each other for you to be your best. So duplication is important um, and a real lasting effect is when there is sustainability in whatever you do, right? So if you're going to do something, have someone close to you that actually is watching uh, so that they can then do what you do when you cannot do it. Either you move on to other things or, you know, or, or you've, you've, you've grown to the next level. That person can keep what you started actually going. That's sustainability. No man achieves anything great alone. So if you're going to work, bring someone to watch you work, allow them to also do the work so that you can duplicate yourself. That makes sense, I hope. <clears throat> um, and if you think about it, um, and children are a good example when he says be fruitful and multiply, in that your children become your legacy, right? They represent you when you actually have since gone or moved on to other greater things, bigger things, etc., etc., so it is then important to spend and invest um, a lot of time being intentional about how we raise our kids. And maybe that's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to broaden that not only to physical children, uh, but anyone that you actually may mentor. Because that's what it is. When you get to work, you become uh, good at what you do and then you have to pass that on to others. And those effectively become your children, quote unquote. Okay, cool. So. Um, your repentance, your waking up and actually picking up this call, your, your, your effort, I guess, to grow this seed and blessing that has been given to you, reading more books, you know, associating with the right people, finding yourself in a space that helps you grow, typically a church. It is not so much about you, but it is about your children, if you think about it, because they can only do what you do. I think I read something this morning. Uh, it was, I think... Uh, uh, Chavez, uh, he said, um, if, you, if you take church casually, don't be surprised if your children find it unnecessary. Something along those lines, I paraphrase. But what that effectively then communicates and says is that it is important uh, that you do the right things now so that those who come after you take it to the next level. I hope that makes sense. So your repentance, in other words, and repentance is nothing but just turning direction because you found a better truth. That 
is dependent or your children are dependent on that for them then to not only survive but also take it to the next level even more importantly so we have to be intentional okay cool i think the bible says your inheritance or rather a wise man lays his inheritance for his children and his children's children all the way up to the third and fourth generation you know that's wisdom that's how it defines wisdom i think it's in the book of proverbs look it up i'll try and put it on the on the caption as well but that's what it says because it's not about you even in, in having an inheritance it's not really about just enjoying or eating that inheritance most of us actually work but the fruits will be experienced by others uh, i think paul says um, i plant the seeds and others will water them and others then will harvest you know what i mean it's it's a cycle um, and it's a chain a generational chain that god works through and works with okay cool beyond a blood but blood covenant this talks to a replication the point there is replication i wrote beyond blood but blood covenant what i mean by that simply is it is not necessarily ending with your physical children as in blood but your spiritual children as in the blood of christ beyond blood but blood in the kingdom or the blood covenant as i wrote to our chair and then um, subset to that is that your seed for god's seed first the kingdom so your seed needs to understand the priority that it is first his kingdom and everything else follows um, and then he speaks or it speaks also about having dominion subduing it and it says the earth right subdue the earth it says you will replenish it in other words take care of it nourish it put back what you take out of it yes <laughs> that's replenishing isn't it and then you will subdue it what do you subdue the earth and it specifies there uh, about having dominion over birds over fish and over every creeping and crawling um, animal not over another human being you know so if you are a leader that's why leadership it's not management it is not domineering it is you know it is it is something else Uh, because it is not about having dominion or power over other people it is really about having dominion power over everything else alongside those people if you think about it okay cool um come back by the way side side point or segue um go back to last week's conversation where we unpacked the the the, the i think it was uh, the different levels of warfare which is c uh we spoke about the sea the air which is of course flights and then the land right if you think about the seal team that's where you have dominion over different sectors and different spaces but go to last week to get some of that revelation as well so even to men i think we are now in the 16 days of activism against women and children um it is not dominion over the women it is dominion over the processes and sectors around us I think this is important truth which uh, maybe it needs a different or a specific separate uh, um some time for us to dwell into that. Okay, cool. So, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and this is the blessing that the Lord has given us. We have to tackle work, be deliberate about it and come out as the people and winners that we are born to be and designed to be more importantly. Stay blessed.